Have you ever been on an airplane on the way to your next show thinking, I should take the time and pre-configure my E2 system before I get there? Well, the Restore XML feature allows you to do that. You can take a configuration you've created on a simulator and load it onto a live system. But who are we kidding? No plane has this much leg room, and you're probably going to do it from your home office or from your hotel before you actually get to show site. I'm Tim Cashel with the Evolve Academy, and today I'll be showing you how to use Restore XML. So here's a configuration that I've built in the simulator. I have three SDIs, which are cameras one, two, three. I built two HDMIs that are a graphics machine and a playback device. Then I have some destinations created. I have two single screen destinations with a layer each assigned. And then I have a two screen blend that is set up with four layers. I've also gone and assigned two auxes to be my downstage monitors. I've also turned on the multi-viewer outputs in this configuration. If I go to the programming screen here, I do have some presets already built. Uh, preset one, if I recall it, shows my three cameras on the preview. Uh, preset two will show graphics one. And preset three will show my playback stretched across the entire widescreen destination. Now in the simulator, you can program all the presets you think you might need for a show. They can include single destinations or multiple destinations, just like if you were attached to a real frame. On the multi-viewer, we've gone ahead and pre-built a multi-viewer configuration with the widescreens in the middle, flanking screens, DSMs, and finally the sources we have. The most important thing we need to do before we move this configuration is to save it. So on the bottom left hand corner, click on the floppy disk to save this configuration to your local computer. Now we're going to minimize the tool set and go out to our Windows File Explorer and go to the C drive, look for the folder called Barco, double click, go to the version that we are working on with tool set, the latest version, double click. Go to the folder called WVP underscore 9876, double click. And then we can see there are two folders here. We're going to go to the folder called XML. We're going to open that up. And inside of there, you'll see your presets, your stills, your user keys, and the configuration settings file for your simulated system. So we're going to go ahead and go back up a directory here. And now, we're going to create a file on our desktop, actually a folder on our desktop called EM. We're going to go ahead and open up that folder. And inside of that folder, we're going to create another folder called Backup. Okay, now in this folder called Backup, we are going to place a copy of the XML folder. So going back, we're going to make a copy, and we're going to paste that copy into the Backup folder. Now we're going to open the XML folder that we've just created. And we're going to rename the settings as settings underscore backup. Now we want to make sure we don't change the extension or add .xml as an extension. Now we're going to take that entire EM folder from our desktop and place it onto a FAT32 formatted USB drive. Once we've placed it in the root directory, we're going to go ahead and eject that thumb drive and we're going to stick it into a live E2. So just to show you, this is a live E2 system after it's been factory reset. There's no configuration on it. We're going to take the thumb drive, place it in the USB port on the front of the E2. And using the front menu, 
we're gonna navigate to the system menu and then to USB backup restore and then to restore XML and hit select. It's gonna automatically start uploading our XML file and when it's ready to reset the unit, it'll ask us if we wanna reset by hitting the select key, hit yes, and the unit will start to reset. At this point, it's safe to remove the USB stick. It's no longer needed, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, if we go back up here to our configuration, we see that the frame has dropped off connection since it's resetting. And what'll happen is when the unit restores itself in about two minutes, we should see the configuration uh, pop up here on the screen. It's a good time to mention while we're waiting for the system to come back online that your card configurations in the simulator and your live system should match when you create the offline system. Otherwise, when you go to restore the XML, you may have some inputs that don't match or you may have destinations created on our outputs that don't exist in the actual live unit. Those destinations will be grayed out and you'll have to recreate them. As our system comes back online, you see our destinations and input configurations popping up. If we were to go to the input tab, we would see that the inputs we created and the names we gave to those inputs are still in place as well as the destinations, their layer assignments, and their names. If we were to go to the programming tab and then go to our presets tab, what we'll notice is that the presets we created are in place. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on preset one here and recall it. And in the preview for the widescreen, we should see the three windows pop up representing the three cameras. Now realize that the icons from your simulator do not transfer over to the live unit, so you will have to rebuild your icons or replace them in the live unit. There's preset two and preset three. Recalling and there it is. Now for our multi-viewer, if we go to that menu, we notice it's not activated. So uh, we have to go back to our configuration menu and reactivate our multi-viewer outputs. Now chances are those configurations are not saved because if the system did not activate the multi-viewers on the restore, then it probably did not memorize the layouts we had, and that is the case. This does happen with the restore XML function and the multi-viewer from time to time. I'm Tim Cashell with the Evolve Academy, and this is Restore XML. Thank you for watching.